Welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to see everybody here once again. We come to you virtually in our wonderful land of not being able to see people. I am Nick Face. It's good to have you all here once again to join us for another great edition of Face the Facts. We have Phil Healy here, our NorCam studio coordinator and jack of all trades. And then we have Tom Smith up in the left-hand corner rocking some Bruins gear after a 5-4, unbelievably successful, we're two for two so far this season in shootouts, uh, Bruins win. So we'll talk a little bit about that here today. We'll also talk about the Celtics, how they are kind of missing Jason Tatum quite a bit. Um, and then we also have some news with some football and some baseball. On our last program, we did not get to anything baseball. So I actually want to start today with some baseball. Um, I want to talk about the <laughs> Hall of Fame. We have some Hall of Fame um, updates that are coming in with who could be representing the 2021 class. Um, I also want to talk about what the Red Sox have come out with a statement about for their 2021 season, which I am not happy about. Um, and then we will transition into our, our sports that are currently happening. So first of all, first of all, uh, in January, usually every year, we have an announcement about who is going into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, I got a report today from, uh, actually, I went on Twitter. I'm sorry, folks. That only lasted a couple of days. Um, yeah, really? I had, to, I had to get some sort of information <laughs> and inside scoop on what was going on. Um, and I found out that Kurt Schilling looks like he will be elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame um, in the next week or so when that announcement comes in. Um, so far, the ballots that have been submitted and counted, looks like he's at a 74.7% of the voters have selected him in. You need, um, I believe it's uh, 75, I, it's either 75 or 76, but um, looking good for Schilling on that front. But there's been a lot of criticism about Schilling because he obviously is a very polarized figure. He has a big mouth. He is a conservative. He likes to say how it is, and we're living in a world right now where there's a lot of censorship, there's a lot of criticism on who you support and who you don't support, and it's unfortunate because you should be judging the, not so much judging, but you should be issuing a Hall of Fame credential of a career based upon the performance and not the person's overall beliefs and values and stance on what they stand for. So I'm a little outraged about that. I'm a little disgusted how people are so beyond sensitive right now on this ridiculous stuff that really shouldn't be a uh, any, any sort of characteristic here on how to get into a baseball Hall of Fame. So Kurt Schilling looks like he could be one. Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens are high up on people's list as well. So I want to talk to you guys about what you feel on those polarizing figures potentially entering the Hall of Fame. I mean, I guess, I mean, Schilling, I mean, I guess they all are polar. I don't know if they're polarizing all of them. I mean, I guess Schilling has a, a weird history of just that stuff. But I mean, I if you want to lay it out as far as the baseball explanation, should Schilling be put in there? He's got two championships. And does three. he have an, he's got, oh, he has three? No, wait, who do you have? Yeah, he won one with the Diamondbacks. Uh, oh, that's right. And he won two with those. Uh, two the, with the Red Sox. Uh, two with the Red Sox. That's right. That's, oh, wow. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. And he actually, oh yeah, that's right. I think well, that was in 2013, right? Yeah. No, not 2013. Well, was it? No, he no. won. Uh, so he it retired was 2011? in 2008, I believe. That's oh no, 2007. 2000, yes, 2007. 2007, yeah. 2004. And, yeah, the, and um, he and Randy Johnson. Uh, he and Randy Johnson beat the Yankees. They were on a hot streak in, in in 2001. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, and that was a great game seven, uh, too, actually. It was back and forth. Robinson, I mean, I'll, I'll never forget, Rob without Schilling, without Schilling and his uh, performance from there, from especially 04, you don't yeah. win a championship. I mean, there are a lot of pieces to no. the puzzle with it, but his gutsy performances that he did and he, and he had in his career were tremendous. Um, and then you got 07. A lot of people don't even look at 07. I mean, he was really good. And no, he, he was hurt. Was he had a lot of good games in the postseason. He did. If I need a win from any Major League Baseball pitcher from my generation from growing up and everything, if, I, if the game's on the line, Kurt Schilling's got the ball for me. Not Pedro. Uh, 
Well, no, it's Pedro for me. It's Pedro for me. If you're talking, you like Pedro? if it's vintage, if you're talking about like, because even like when Pedro didn't have his, Pedro never was an issue. I don't know. I grew up like that because he came in that series, like I think it was 99 and that series against the Indians in the the opening round. Uh, not the wild. Yeah, the, I guess the wild. When he came out of the bullpen and he thought came he out, was Vintage yep. Pedro lights out. Yeah, no, he uh, he threw a no hitter for like seven innings or something, or like yep. close to eight innings. Yep, and he and wasn't even supposed to pitch, and he went no, to he Williams, the manager at the time, and said, "Put yep. me in. This yep. is my game. We'll win." And they did. And and I don't blame. I also don't blame. Here's another thing. I don't blame him or Grady Little for 2003. I don't because he, you know, he wasn't doing badly. There were a couple of people who let on, and he still was kind of he still was kind of coasting up until that point. I mean, they did break from their their routine. I'll give them that, and I think you know, that that's what cost them. Yeah, sure. But I mean, I I don't begrudge the man for uh, the decision. But yeah, uh, to the original question, yeah, I think Kurt Schilling. I think there's a good. I think there's a good shot that he should be in there. Barry Bonds, even before the old steroids thing, he was a he was Bonds, a great hitter. I think I saw was at seventy two percent so far. So that. So could what do they happen. need? 75 is that what they need, they need about 75 and then clemens was at 71 i think clemens should be like i know it's like the steroid it's, there's BS. like two different versions of roger clemens you got your 84 <laughs> to 95 when he was a red Sox yeah. or 96 and then you have his blue jays era and then the yankees and the astros which yeah definitely he was doing some sort of a steroid thing so well i mean even um, you could argue oh go ahead sorry so that's that's why I, I more look at Roger Clemens as a yes, and I do look yeah. at Bonds as a yes because again you have two different, you have two different kind of people. I agree. You yeah. a Bonds with steroids, you got a Bonds without steroids. So if you're making one exception for a Clemens and you're making an exception for for a Bonds, you got to put him in. It was a part yeah. of the game, unfortunately. Well, Clemens yeah. has been a Clemens has been a part of the conversation, and even on the ballot for the past few years, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been on five years now or something like that. Yeah, he's been on for a while, and I think so he gets I'm taken off after a while. I'm curious to see what happens too, from, from that standpoint, but I just wanted our viewers to know what things look like and hear our take on what we feel. You hear three pretty much different opinions on it. Um, everybody has their opinion, so it's a matter of what you feel is right and what you feel is wrong. So... Uh, we'll see in the next couple of weeks how things look um, on the free agency and the off season here on the Red Sox uh, stance. Um, I've never been a fan of Sam Kennedy. He is the president of the Red Sox and everything right now. I've told you guys very vocally how I am done with this ownership group. I want to change. I want something else, somebody else to come in, get the team and just, we, we need new blood in here. I feel, and it's, well, the Mets, say that. the Mets just fired their GM. I, well, <laughs> oh, did they? There you go. This is a family-friendly show here, and you want to dive into that, huh? You didn't hear about that, Phil? I did not. Yeah, just I was, I was up Cohen, for the gig. And you'll, you'll, uh, Jared Porter, Steve Cohen. You'll, you'll, you'll get a, you'll get a mouthful. I'll just leave yeah. it at that. Um, <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I think it's time. You got 04, you got 07, you got 13, and then, of course, you have 2018. Yes, they have four championships in this ownership group, but. Should have more. You should have more, number one. Well, I mean, You've yeah, been, I guess. How many more do you think? At least two. 2008 yeah. should have been a championship. 2008. Oh, with. That, um, that, that team, 2003 should have been a championship. 2019, two. too. 2018, they won. 2019. Oh, the year after. Okay. Okay. So. No, wait. 2019 is when they won. No. 2000. Was it? Baseball's the oh, only it sport that has one season in the same year. Oh, that's true. Oh, you're right. Yeah. That is true. That is true. Wait, I thought. Yeah. So wait. On no, the, it was um, on the free. Oh age, no, you're right. You're uh, right. Sam Kennedy came out and <laughs> said that the Red the Sox year, are going to be rebuilding. They're not going to dive deep into signing big names. They're not going to get. They're they're going to be competitive. They he said, but they're not going to be championship caliber and driven. Well, I mean, not a really. Good that's what everybody said about 2004. Not really yeah. good. So. Well, I mean, I, that what I'm just not a fan. I can't be a fan of him. Why? 
Because he's a lame duck. That's why. He's a lame Can't... quacking duck. Well, I guess, but they need, don't you think they need to rebuild the farm? They have to rebuild the farm system and go from there. I don't know if they can do both. That's part of your problem. I mean, I'm all yeah. I'm great with the rebuild, but if you don't, you also have to figure out how you're going to put together a pitching staff. At this current point, you have no pitching. You have nobody in the, uh, the uh, well, you have Benintendi who could be a free, who could be traded. You have Bradley Jr. who's a free agent. No, no, don't know what's going to happen. You got all these players moving. You got Toronto's getting better. They just signed George Springer. Um, you have the Yankees getting better. They, they oh, went Toronto they got, signed uh, Springer. Oh, wow. A bunch of different players. How can you not get John Lester back? I mean, for one year at what, $7 million, the, the uh, Washington Nationals yeah. signed for? That was like, oh, it just doesn't sit right with me. So I think it's going to be a long year, Red Sox folks, uh, Red Sox fans. So I'm not excited. This team doesn't excite me. Not whatsoever now it's time for us to transition into i want to go to the bruins first because i know tom is was mr optimistic on our last program talking about not to worry things are going to be all fine and dandy well tom i am concerned i am concerned greatly with what i see i see an old offense i see no spark i see a team that is searching for their identity. I don't like what I see. That's my take. Sorry. Um, no, I mean, it's not looking. I mean, it's not looking great right now, but it could be a lot worse. I mean, you're looking at a team that's undefeated. It's crazy for me to even say that, but I, I, I think the reason why. Um, not so hot on this team is there's no David Poshnick for some mysterious injury that we still don't know what the hell is going on with. They keep playing. They keep moving people around. Last night you saw DeBrusque on the first line. Got a little spark. I will say I thought it was DeBrusque's best game, I thought, of uh, the season so far. Um, the, pl the player that I told you, the player that I said right on this show, who I want to see more of, Jack Studnicka, Mr. No Teeth in the front, did the job and got the first full-strength goal of the season. So I, I like that. That's that's great. That led to a, a Charlie Coyle goal, which we needed to see because he's been a little lackluster so far. I thought the defense from this past game against the Flyers was spotty. We saw a goal from Carlo, which I like. But I want to point on one particular defenseman that needs to be criticized and needs to be playing better and has been so overhyped for what? I don't know. Charlie McAvoy. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? Yeah. What yeah. is his ceiling? What does it look like? Because he doesn't score. You got Tori Krug, who's gone. Clearly, Carlo or or uh, Crew, uh, uh, not Krug, or uh, McAvoy are supposed to be taking the minutes from Chara and and Krug that are right there. So you have to have a puck scoring defenseman, in my opinion, to be successful, especially on the Bruins. And it, I mean, yes, you have Ray Bork, who, who was an amazing, and Bobby Orr, and all these guys. But something about the Bruins sp sparks to me a puck scoring defenseman and one of those guys needs to get a kick in their ass or something because i'm getting real fed up with get oh yeah mcavoy he's wonderful he's great he's the next up and coming superstar ba 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 i am so done with the bullshit he hasn't get done anything he hasn't done anything since the first uh, playoffs season he's done nothing. He came up in the he hasn't done anything he's a since sack then. of crap i'm sorry but he is he's a potato um, I just done things in his game that are good. Yes. But you know who we remind me of? We, 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 the, that people keep spewing out this crap about him being so good. You know who he actually reminds me of kind of a little bit? Dougie Hamilton. I can see. I think he's a little more tough. I think Dougie was nothing but a freaking marshmallow. 
Yeah, I mean, he, obviously he hasn't gotten as injured as much as, uh, as Hamilton, but, you know, Hamilton had all this r- ranting and raving about him about how good he was going to be and all this, and he yeah. hasn't – he didn't do anything really for nothing. the Bruins. Really nothing. Um, but, yeah. And, but I do want to I do want to point out that um, someone a defenseman that a lot of people thought shouldn't be on the team um, that's actually making a pretty good impact so far in the four games four game season so far uh, is Kevin Miller. Our, uh, yes, um, you're seeing a guy that had broken kneecaps come back, and that's a very painful sometimes career ending injury. I like what I see. I think they actually made a good decision on that. It's early. I'll be optimistic on it. Kevin Miller has not proven that he can stay healthy in a long season. He's proven to be injury prone. So he better not be another bag of glass that just shatters and bursts all over the ice. I, I hope mean, we'll for the see. best for him. But the defense has actually been, in my opinion, one of the strengths of the team. Um, the defense, I think, I think the team's going to look a lot better once and if Pasternak ever comes back. Um, again, like you said, we don't really know what's going on with that. Um, but I think the one thing that's really keeping the team in it this so far is the goaltending. Duke has been outstanding. I will say he's been standing on his head. If anybody wants to criticize Tuka Rask, that's unfair. That's very unfair. He's played. He's been A plus. He's been Vesna caliber throughout the entire run here. Has Halak played any games yet? He's, um, yeah, he played one game. He played he the played Saturday game, game last weekend, I believe. The that's Devils. the game they lost in overtime. So that's he really can't play him overtime. that. The Bruins' no. goaltending needs to continue to be a strength. It is a, Rask, is the re- Rask is the reason why the Bruins still had a chance to come back in the game against the Flyers. Did you? you I'm, ass- I'm assuming that you saw the overtime um, last night. I mean, yeah. he made some unbelievable stops on those three-on-threes and breakaways. I, it was tremendous. Well, he had that. He had that save against uh, Kyle Palmieri too on the breakaway, he, where there yeah. was no one. Not the one <laughs> that went off, no of his, one. off of the helmet. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, um, he was a wall. He was a wall. It was outstanding, and I'm um, happy to see he definitely looks locked in. He looks motivated, and like I said from last week's show too, he is in a contract year, so it's. It's time to put the pedal to the metal for him if he wants a bit another contract. And I mean, Hawks looking like a Vesna caliber goal t- goalie too. At least in the one game he played, anyway. Yep. So yeah, he's looked fine too. Um, I think Phil disappeared. Phil, I'm. Uh, I, we're almost done with the hockey segment, so <laughs> the ghost of Phil. There he is. We are just Tom about took uh, the, uh, Tom took uh, the words uh, out of who my the mouth. Bruins um, play next? Just out of my to close them out. Tell you that much. The Bruins are playing um, the Flyers again. They are playing a Flyers. Saturday. So that's Saturday, Saturday night seven. game. Okay. I expect another win. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a strange. Um, I think I think the Flyers are going to be a tough opponent this year. Yeah. Um, I think. Um, I think Washington is going to be tough. I don't think Pittsburgh is going to be very. I, I think we I, I think the Bruins have a very good chance of making the playoffs this year. I'll hold you to that statement. The Celtics, on the other hand, uh, they've looked pretty good this season so far. I think they've exceeded a lot of people's expectations with uh, being uh, being able to beat some big teams with the players and and things that they have. You know, they didn't have Kemba for a little bit. Kemba's now back. Looked great on um, the Tuesday, no, the Wednesday game that was just last. Uh, the first game that he came back was a little shaky with that, a little rusty. I expect that. The big loss is Tatum. Okay, Tatum had the virus of some sorts and is in uh, some locked in, who, know, who knows where, not allowed to play. The last game that they just had, uh, Phil, uh, did you get a chance to see um, the last game for the Celtics? Uh, against, no, I actually didn't get the, a chance to watch most of uh, the Philly game. The Philly I watched game. some of the New York game. Yeah. They're playing Philly again tonight. That's part of their, like, two out of, I think, like, 
two they out don't of three want to or three back to backs because of obviously yeah. the virus. It's it's easier to do those back to back and yep. accommodate that way. They're starting to pull like a baseball thing, which is actually kind of cool. I actually think yep. it's a, a nice uh, way to go about it. But I, I just to, uh, I just yeah, want to say I'm sorry. I just want to say uh, Tom took the words right out of my mouth regarding hockey. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't Always. I didn't know. Yeah, thanks for taking a play uh, out of my uh, or a page out of my book, Tom, out of my analysis. <laughs> But yeah, you got it, coach. You got it. I, I got <laughs> Thanks. The student has become the teacher. Um, but sorry, Nick. What were you? I, I just want to know I'm um, your outlook. I mean, I'm sure you're happy to oh, yeah. come back for the Celtics and add some more depth. Um, he's obviously on a minutes restrictions about what 20 minutes a game that he's playing right now. Something like that. And they always are pretty good about that sort of thing. I, you know, I actually say keep them out for longer if you want. I mean, build up I, the strength. Yeah. Yeah. Build up the strength and also get the other guys kind of involved uh, a little more. Cause I mean, it's tough. Cause when you get Kemba, when you get a player like that back in it, it takes away some minutes, but it's also like, you got to see how people play with each other. You got to see how, you know, the team mixes. Yeah. I think that's a, that's an important step. So it's tough to keep them out for long, but you want to, like you said, keep them him kind of fresh for you know it's a long it's a shorter season but it's a long season overall i have to um, say the celtics didn't really even take the um the big spot here for me if anything uh for the nba i thought the best thing that happened this week and you know how much i love Kyrie, was oh, here we go. Yep. the brooklyn nets with that clan of crap together lose so uh they paid they played great but they ended yeah. up not coming up to cleveland right uh, to cleveland yeah. coming up just a little bit short and that was a big time smile on this face in, right here. in overtime to brandon sexton and this was something actually i remember brandon sexton was the pick uh that cleveland used that they got from boston when Kyrie was traded to boston so another Arma. proverbial yeah another punch in the gut uh, I, I, there's, I just don't ever see Kyrie ever winning another championship outside of having. I mean, they could. I mean, they have heart. They have three great players on their team they right now. They're gonna crash and burn so fast. They, and you know what? Love it. It's, I love it's it. possible. I mean, I don't think that's love outside it, love of the it, realm. Love it. But I think I all, can't honestly, wait for them to like have like a locker room and someone punches somebody out in the face. And they start calling out the media. Or oh, it could be absolute train. No, so you're not going to change his mind. <laughs> and, well, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to change his mind. But uh, hanging on the door, the uncut locker room edition of the Brooklyn Nets. Here it comes. Well, there you go. Like, well, no, I, I, I don't Beverly disagree. Hills Housewives, whatever you call it. Oh, Just sure. They have. A, they have a New York one too. I think. Crap show. <laughs> well, they had. I think what was it? Uh, I forget what's her name. Mello's wife had her own show. I think it was inspired. I figured it was basketball wives or something, but they actually basketball started wives or something like that. Yeah. It's like, and they actually, uh, one of those three on it. It's the same thing. And it was kind of like running man. I don't know if you ever seen that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, yes, but it was, kind of, yep. it's, it was kind of like that where they actually were in a position where they had to murder each other. And you know, well that, that didn't pass the censors. Right. So, uh, but, um, no, no, uh, it's very interesting. I think the nets it's weird. They already had a good team. They gave up a lot to get Harden. Oh, and I think, every, yeah, but I, it's, it's weird because it's like, well, they have three great players and we'll see like wait until playoffs. Cause sometimes that's all you need. And especially with like, you're kind you don't have a crowd thing going on. And maybe you do by the end of the season, who knows, you know, knock on wood, you know, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's a team you don't want to play. You don't want to play Kevin Durant one. You don't want to play Kevin Durant in the playoffs. Uh, two, Kevin Durant and James Harden and like, a second or third option, Kyrie Irving. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. They're they're gonna, they're going to be plenty dangerous, and I I don't doubt that they'll be self destructive. It's just a matter of will that will that infighting be enough to take take it down? Because I think Harden might actually be. Well, this is you know saying something. He might be one of the more uh, with it uh, people on the team because I think he wants that ring. I think he knows that he's up there. And uh, he, you know, doesn't have much a of a chance. chance. Don't blow it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, it, it's going to be tough. Like, and, and with that being said, too, Philly is a good team. And Bede went off for, like, 42 points. Yep. I think, like, half of that was from the line. But that's that's his game, too. A lot of it is, like, he'll, you know, because he's so big and quick. Oh, sometimes. He, he, last year wasn't as quick because he was quick to the donut shop. But, I mean, that's pretty much beyond that. Or to the bottom of, you know, whatever, uh, seized candy bag. 
but I don't know why I'm getting product specific, but uh, <laughs> he is, yeah, no, I think Philadelphia is always, especially with Doc Rivers coaching them, they're going to be good. But the C's, I, I do not worry about the C's as much. And I think if they, you know, you get a midseason acquisition, maybe, maybe another forward, uh, wing forward off the, that comes off the bench or someone you could like a David West type from back in the day, like from Indiana, uh, who could like be kind of a strong man. Yeah, but also I like mid range jumper. They need the depth, and they need yeah, someone they need. with a veteran presence, kind of like again what we saw from uh, Miami when they had um, yep. what's his face? In yeah, I know. I can't. Uh, Iguodala. Yep. Get get the job done. I mean, they need that kind of example setting, right? And there. the Heat are kind of wavering right now too. But, uh, yeah. but they had a good game. They had a good game against the Celtics a little bit earlier. Yeah, a, a, a week or two ago. It feels like forever, to be honest, man, because they hadn't. They only played like three games in like three or four games in like a week and a half, almost yep. two weeks, because yep. of COVID. Um, um, yeah. On um, on the football front, just very quickly, uh, we're almost done with our uh, our, our ninety six show, which is crazy. Um, wow. I just want to see what everybody's take is here. We have Kansas City and Buffalo this weekend. We also have the Bucks, which will be playing the Packers. Uh, no more Drew Brees. Drew Brees was taken out by the GOAT, Tom Brady. So let's go to uh, the AFC first. Let's talk about the Bills and the Chiefs. Uh, I know what Phil, I know who Phil's rooting for from that background right there. Um, well, I can, I can tell you. Logically, it's going to happen. And let me tell you, just show you the background there. So that is Scott Norwood. And I forget who that is for the Giants, but that's in, I forget what Super Bowl that is. I think that's like 90 or 91. Uh, the Buffalo Bills' first Super Bowl with Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, uh, and uh, Don Beebe in that gang. They were a field goal away from winning it. And that man, Scott Norwood, missed right, wide right. And they end up losing to the, the then defensively coached uh, Bill Belichick and head coach Bill Parcell uh, Giants. So I'm, I, this is my background to exercise those demons and also to kind of taunt uh, the Bills Mafia because why not? They're, they're a bunch of weirdos. But um, I, I think the Bills have a, a, a really good shot. I think they're a much better team than a lot of people give them credit for. And I think I love Kansas City in the sense that I think they're, they're an amazing – like offensively, they're one of the best teams you've seen in the last couple of years. As much as we hate Mahomes, you know, and, you know, nothing wrong to, to hate on him because he's, he's pretty good. Uh, and also, I was so pissed. The, the Browns had such an opportunity. They had a chance. It, it was wide open, but they just kind of, like, balked at it. They really did. They had a shot. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think the Bills can take it. I think it'll be a shootout. I think the Bills have a much better defense than, than that of Kansas City. Uh, and I think if they uh, – And a better coach. And, uh, yeah, well, yeah, you can make that argument. I mean, I, I think Reed – Never, yeah. ever – been a fan of Andy Reid. Never. Yeah. He's Just not winning because of himself there. He's winning because of Mahomes and the team. I mean, well, well be that's, here. But isn't that He's the argument for any NFL coach? Life. No. <laughs> well, I mean, but to be fair, but to be fair, Andy Reid made it to the NFC Championship. Get him a freaking chicken Bowl, McNugget like four from times. McDonald's and he'll be happy. But because I mean, one, of his team, Phil. Well, no, of course, but also, but he, he not every co- not every coach has done it. But also to that chicken McNugget. I mean, one nugget is not going to satisfy that man. No, he needs you know, a 32 you know, piece. No, he needs a hose. He needs just so they just feed it down. It's like a, a nugget slide, I guess I'll call it. But, well, that's well, what they call his gullet. Yeah, I mean. and I, I think I think the game, I think that the Chiefs-Bills game is, is, I mean, is Mahomes, I know Mahomes got concussed against the Browns. Is he going to be back? He's officially he cleared, I believe. Yeah, he's going to okay. be he's cleared. Yeah, yeah, yeah I so I mean, he could go. Him. It could yeah, go I think they were going to push it forward, anyways. It could go, it could go, um, it could go back and forth. It all depends on how how well Mahomes handles it and everything. Um, I know he's been there before, so he, he understands the. the I want the Bills the game and everything. I'll, I'll tell you that I do not like the Chiefs. I do not want the Chiefs. No. I want. Every, I think I think the Bills, the Bills way. I want to see Josh Allen go to the Super Bowl and then Tom Brady. The Bills deserve it this year. The Bills deserve it this year, um, and I think I think they can pull it off. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm with you. I think the Bills have I been think pretty. They can get great. the job done. It's just a matter of how prepared, how focused, how determined they are to get to that Super Bowl. Um, you got the Bucs and the Packers. I mean, the Packers have had a great regular season, but we know the story with Rodgers. I mean, he's got one championship. 
He doesn't get it done in the championship games typically. I just think Tom Brady and the, is so motivated to win not being a Patriot, and I would be absolutely shocked if Brady and the Bucs are not in the Super Bowl. I would be shocked. Well, this is this is the matchup that everybody. This is one of the uh, one of the other matchups that everybody wanted to see. Brady everybody wanted, versus the, everybody wanted the Bucks and the Saints, and now we get the Bucks and the Packers. It's best case scenario for the NFL. Yeah, I mean, this this is what everybody wants to see in the playoffs: the Brady Rogers matchup. Um, aside from Brady Breeze, but you know, and it's pretty cool that if the Bucks win, I mean, the Super Bowl will be at their in Tampa. In Tampa. Yeah. I kept I mean, which is forgetting cool. that too. Yeah, that was not, and we that's, mentioned that at the beginning. That's of the part year of the too. reason why I want. That's that's <laughs> the reason why I want Tampa, and just just to see it. You know, and they are just, letting fans in. Apparently, twenty thousand fans are allowed to see it. I mean, that's something. But no, that, I mean um, that that's is pretty cool. That's Florida yeah. for you. And you got the weekend doing the halftime show. There you oh, go. Yeah. There you go. Well, anyways, guys, um, we talked all four sports today. We did it within a half an hour. So kudos to all of us here for getting the job done on time and perfectly. So we'll be back with you um, for our next show where we will talk more about what happens in this AFC championship weekend. Um, we'll see how the Bruins do throughout the next week and see how the Celtics hopefully return Tatum. Uh, back to health and lead the Celtics into a nice run to continue on their winning ways. So for Nick Face, Tom Smith, and Phil Healy, we will see you next time on another virtual episode of Face the Facts. Goodbye.